Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're talking about three month impressions. A couple months ago, I did a first impressions of New Zealand from a Canadian's perspective. And now that we've been here for three whole months and we've traveled around a lot, we are now on the South Island. I think I have some better formed opinions and a few things that might be a little bit spicy. Might be a little spice in this one. First things first, do not trust the forecast here. At least when we were in the Auckland region for three months, it was crazy how quickly it could change. I have heard people talk about this before, but I think it's best if you're going out and about for the day, just bring a raincoat. You never know. If it doesn't say it's going to rain, even if it says it's like a 10% chance of rain, yeah, just bring it anyway because you might get a bit of rain or it might rain for like hours super hard out of nowhere. And definitely dress in layers because you can get a pretty hot day, even if it says the high is only going to be like 16. If you're right directly in the sun, it's going to feel a lot warmer than that. The weather can change really quickly and rapidly. It can get very windy and rainy and cold. So just be prepared. I've trusted the forecast by mistake in the past and was pretty uncomfortable. So I did a cost of living video. If you're interested, I'll link it above and down below where I said that it was about the same as living in Calgary, Canada. We all know that the price of things has skyrocketed since the pandemic and inflation is out of control. So it is expensive. Pretty much every major city has these inflated prices and crazy rent. The longer that we've been here, I have noticed that groceries are actually quite a bit more expensive than I had initially thought. Even with the exchange rate, the Canadian dollar does go a bit further. It is a bit more expensive here. And rent, especially in the bigger city centers, it is expensive. Now let's talk about friendliness. So I mentioned friendliness in my first impressions video and a lot of people were not too happy about how I felt about that. I basically said that Kiwis and Canadians are the same in terms of friendliness. We both have a global reputation of being super friendly and welcoming. And I do at this point stand by that. So we've been here for three months. We've traveled a lot. Yes, we've been out of Auckland many times. We've been all the way down to the South Island. We've been through lots of small towns. We've done tons of road trips. I've personally worked with Kiwis and Mori. And I have to say that there are a few individual people that are Kiwi that are extremely friendly, like well out of their way, going out of their way to help people, to chat with people. But those are outliers. I do find a lot of people here are pretty much the same in terms of friendliness with Canadians. I think that's why we get along so well. And that's why, you know, maybe Australians and Americans, they have their own thing going on. But Kiwis and Canadians, I think we're really similar in terms of how welcoming we are to people who aren't from our country, to travelers, to each other. I think we're just naturally very friendly and that's why we get along so well. That's why Kiwis and Canadians are such good friends and we, we just love each other, I think. So one thing I did want to mention is that if you're going into, let's say, like a gas station or a bakery or a grocery store or somewhere where you're dealing with someone who works in like the customer facing service industry, I do unfortunately find a lot of people here are not that friendly. I know back home in Canada, if you go into a store like that and usually you're greeted or if you say like, hi, how are you to the person working there, you'll get a response. A lot of places here, we've like said, oh, good morning. How's it going today? And they pretty much just, what do you want? And I worked customer service for over 10 years. So I am not in a position where I don't know what it's like to work in retail or work in a customer facing role. And it does make you bitter, 100%. I don't know if it's because people think that we are American because Kiwis can't really tell the difference in accent. I mean, I don't think Americans and Canadians sound that different unless you have someone who's from like, you know, a really rural part of either country and they have a very pronounced accent of that area. But if you're just like a normal city person like I am or like anyone in the States, we probably sound the same. But there are tons of people who are just out and about like that we meet when we're walking around or doing some exploring that are super happy to chat fellow travelers who are Kiwi or from other countries. I've also noticed that there are a lot more like run down buildings in New Zealand compared to Canada. 
I don't know if it's a weather thing, if it's because there's a lot more rain here or not, but you'll see a lot of buildings that are sort of like peeling, like the paint is peeling off and the, they're just like not as well kept, maybe because the siding in Canada is mostly like a plastic and that it doesn't weather that badly. I don't know if most homes here are still like wooden on the outside and the paint is peeling off because of that. But I don't know if it's typical to see like all these kind of run down buildings with like shattered windows and graffiti all over them, like everywhere. We've seen so many in every different town in every city. Leave me a comment down below if that's because of the cyclone or not. I really don't know. Let's talk about the North Island because we were there for about three months. Now we are on the South Island. I will say the North Island is way more diverse and beautiful than what I had anticipated. We had been consuming a lot of YouTube content before moving here about the South Island mainly because it didn't seem like a lot of people were traveling around the North Island. And the lower part of the North Island, even the Northern part like Cape Reinga and Bay of Islands, we've been down to the Bay of Plenty now, and we've seen like the eastern coast of the North Island and the southern part. Areas like Hamilton, there's a lot of surrounding communities that are technically in Auckland, like where we stayed in Red Beach or Arewa Beach. Just absolutely beautiful, and I feel like it doesn't get enough credit. The North Island is way more beautiful than what we had anticipated. Like, the beaches are unbelievable, and I know it's kind of known for the beaches, but there are beautiful mountain ranges all around. There's a lot of hiking I would have liked to do in the Coromandel area. It's beautiful, and it's definitely worth investing more time and exploring if you're coming just for a short amount of time, I think. I, I don't know how you would really see this country properly in like a week or two, there's just, it's not enough time to see it. It's a smaller country, but it's very long. Like to drive from the Northern tip to the Southern tip would definitely be like 20 hours or something. I'll put it up here, how much time it actually is though. I would love to go back up to the North Island and really give it uh, the exploration it deserves, specifically south of Auckland in the like Tongariro area and back to like Rotorua and Topa and that region was just super beautiful and I would love to go back and explore it more. Let's talk about the roads here. Let's talk about New Zealand drivers because I think they have a bit of a reputation as being a little bit crazy, a little bit wild, a little bit wild on the roads, speeding, doing some dangerous overtaking, which yes, I can attest to that does happen sometimes, but the roads can be pretty wild. So there are a lot of very, very twisty tight corners like you'll be going 100 kilometers an hour and then you'll have a corner that's like 25 and you have to like slam on the brakes and go down but some kiwi drivers don't really slow down they just kind of take those corners at like 80 kilometers an hour and if you're in their way they will be right on your butt while you're driving, it's best to just pull over. There are vehicle bays, like slow vehicle bays that you'll see on the left-hand side of the road. Sometimes if you have an opportunity to pull off and let people pass you, I would say just do it. People don't really want to be stuck behind another vehicle here. That is true in Canada as well, but it's a little more intense here, especially with the super windy roads. And sometimes you can like tap on your brakes a couple times lightly to like signal to the person behind you that you want them to pass, or you can kind of like half pull over onto the shoulder. And usually they'll take that as an opportunity to pass you. But yeah, that is true. The roads can be pretty treacherous and dangerous. Don't feel like you need to speed. Don't feel like you need to go with traffic or go with the flow. If you're not comfortable going over the speed limit, don't do it. It's super dangerous, especially in these super narrow and tight windy roads. Just pull over if you're not comfortable and let everyone behind you pass. It's the easiest and the safest thing to do. Let's talk about recycling. Let's talk about trash. Let's talk about compost. So in Canada, it's very typical. Every single mall, every restaurant, most homes will have three separate bins. You'll have a garbage bin, you'll have a recycling bin, and then you'll have compost. Personally, I haven't seen compost here anywhere, and it is very hard to find recycling bins. Out of the five Airbnbs we've stayed in so far, only one of them has had a recycling bin. I think that is a little bit strange because I view New Zealand as being like a very green 
very earth conscious country. And I know that a large percentage of the things you put into recycling don't actually get recycled. That is something that is a huge problem, but we're not going to get into it in this video. But it is hard to find recycling bins when you're out and about, you're in a city center and you're walking around or you're in a restaurant. A lot of them only have trash bins, which I find very confusing. I don't know why everywhere doesn't have a recycle bin. Compost is something different that maybe is like a newer thing in Canada, like within the last 20 years, but I haven't seen anywhere in New Zealand that composts. If you guys know of areas that have recycle bins like in the right on the regular, I mean, I have seen recycle bins out and about. They're just not that common and kind of hard to find. Okay, let's talk about crossing roads as a pedestrian. So this is something I didn't know about. When we were flying to New Zealand, the gentleman who sat next to me told me to be very careful crossing the street to never jaywalk because you will get run over. Kiwi drivers will not stop for pedestrians. Don't expect them to. Like back in Canada, if you kind of like approach the side of a street, usually the driver will stop and let you go. Not the case here, although it's not as intense as my seat companion had said. Okay, so if you wanna cross the street, you'll see like almost a curb-like thing with an arrow, like a blue arrow pointing down, and there'll be like a curb on either side of this like tiny little walking area, but it's in the middle of the road. So that is meant for crossing the street as a pedestrian. You basically cross one side of the street, stand in that little area in between these two like curbs, wait until it's safe and then cross the other side of the street. There are crosswalks as well. If you see like white lines across the street, that means the vehicle is going to stop for you. If you don't see those white lines, do not walk out into the street. Do not expect vehicles to stop for you. They will not, especially Auckland Transit buses. They are the craziest drivers I think I've seen in this country so far, and they will not stop for you. Like if you're standing at the bus stop and you're too close to the curb, like they will just come up on you. Like step back because they will run into you. It is wild. Make sure you're looking the correct direction because we're used to looking a certain way and it's opposite here. You're gonna look left first back home. Here you have to look right because they're on the left-hand side of the road. I was super nervous trying to cross the street the first time when we got here because I didn't know what was going on because I didn't know that vehicles are not going to stop for you and that you have to be very conscious of the traffic. You have to go and find these like little outcrops to go into. Sometimes you can cross the street if you're if there's like a white like stretch that's a little bit thicker, you can stand. That's not like, I don't recommend doing that. It's a little bit dangerous. Also, let's talk about personal space in New Zealand. So if you're in a store, let's say you're in a grocery store, you're down an aisle and you're contemplating what long life milk creamer to get yourself. I don't know why this is, but every time we've been in a grocery store, no matter what aisle we're down, no matter what we're looking at, like people will get right up in your space, like stand directly beside you and get it right in your space and like, it's just very bizarre to me. Like I'll be standing back to look at something across the aisle and people will just be like crowding me, like trying to get either something behind me. Also, no one says like, excuse me or, oh, like, sorry. I don't know. It's a very Canadian thing if you're in someone's way or they're in your way to be like, oh, sorry. Like, let me just get around you here. Let me just, uh, oh, I just need to get over there. Yep. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Yep. Okay. Very Canadian to do that. Haven't heard anyone say, excuse me here. Even when I've said it, people don't really like get out of the way. I don't know. It's kind of weird. If you guys have noticed this or you think that I'm being crazy or something, let me know down below because I find people get like really close to you. Like even if they're talking to you, they'll be like right up in your face and they'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. And like to the point where you can like feel their breath on you and smell it and it's not great. And I don't know, for a country that was applauded for how they dealt with the pandemic, I don't know if the like six foot distance thing was ever like a big deal here or not, but people have completely thrown that to the side because they get up right close to you. And I don't like people in my personal space, like an arm's length at least if you're closer than that. I'm going to have anxiety about it. I'm going to be like worried that you're too close to me and that you're spreading some kind of germs or something. I don't like that. And that's something I'm just like not a big fan of. 
So yes, there is probably a few controversial opinions in this video because that is just my personal experience. Everyone has a completely different experience and I wanted to be transparent and honest about mine because I don't know, like there's a lot of things in New Zealand that were very built up to me before moving here. And I think it's from people who were just visiting. Living in another country is a completely different experience and everyone has their own personal opinions about things. I just wanted to share mine, a different perspective on living here because I feel like it's sugar-coated a lot of the time and people are not honest about how they're feeling because it's like seen in a negative light. So that is the way that I feel and I still love this country. It's been a real treat to travel around and meet people, but there are realities of living somewhere that you're not from. There are going to be differences. There are going to be things that you're comfortable with back home that are just different in another country. And that's totally a part of growing as a person, totally a part of travel is living somewhere else and getting used to different customs. But I appreciate you guys watching this video and we'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye.